We, Sonia and Januni, are a couple of pals studying science in undergrad. We are not professionals. Though every episode is meticulously researched, mistakes do happen. If you notice that anything, and we mean anything, we state is inaccurate, please let us know. Your comments, suggestions, and queries are important in furthering our personal and audience's understanding of science. Thanks for being a part of this discussion. We appreciate you. We really do. Bop, bop. Beep, bop, bop. Hello, shadows! Okay, <laughs> Good, we'll keep that. Okay, thank you. Um, Why are you keeping that? Like, that's, that's just how we start. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Hello! Sorry, guys, we have a newcomer on our podcast today, and she doesn't know how this works. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, okay, hold on. We restarted. Let's introduce the podcast, and we'll introduce Fiona. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. Are we restarting? Okay, yeah. Wait, three, two, one. Hello, Shadis! Welcome back to another exciting episode of Beaker Bros. Where we drink out of beakers. Because we're bros. Clink! <laughs> I am currently drinking bubble tea. And I currently have no beverage. So we are fakes. Yep. Uh, apologies. That's okay. Anyways, for this week's episode, we have a, we have a guest. Mm-hmm. Some Hello. would say... Oh. <laughs> I was gonna say some would say a special guest. A very special guest. Hi everyone, I'm their housemate. Fiona. Her name is Fiona Hee. <laughs> um Fiona, yes, is also a housemate, but she's also tell about your what are you, fourth year life sci at Mac as well? Yes, ma'am. She is doing her thesis as mm-hmm. well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you want to say a little thesis? bit? Um, I'm doing a thesis on pediatric ophthalmology, which is eye diseases in kids. So we're doing a study, um, just comparing like data from in-person vision screening versus an online website. So because of COVID, a lot of kids didn't get uh, their eye screened. So <laughs> yeah, we're just comparing like if it's valid to do an online online vision acuity test and stuff like that. So yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. Smart gal, smart I, stuff. I know what I'm doing. Yep. Yeah. yeah. She's a woman in STEM. Woman in STEM, we yeah. say. <laughs> and the interesting thing about that is that's not what this podcast is about. <laughs> <laughs> not at all, but very interesting. Yes. I mean, we could make the podcast about... You know what? Once you're done your lit review, we'll come back to yeah, that topic. Sure. Talk to me in eight months. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, for this podcast in particular, though is very exciting as, as they all usual. are as usual but this one even more so because we have fiona and me sonia and Janine. <laughs> but as we usually do but also the topic in particular is very pertinent mm-hmm. to a lot of our audience members or maybe not but more so the age group and that is mental health in university Woohoo! she said Woo-hoo. <laughs> so Briefly, Januni, what is mental health? <laughs> mental health, well, like, I mean, I guess we know about the different disorders like depression, anxiety, or whatever, but mental health can also, like, be about stress and how do you deal with stress on everyday kind of activities. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's, like, physical help, but it's mental. More, mm-hmm. 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 More or less, yeah, according to the definition that I have it's here. It's what you don't see. It It's... Kind of, yeah. Sometimes it may manifest in physical reactions, I guess. Like oh, the, yeah, like yeah. the stuff that yeah. you're experiencing. Mm-hmm. But for a lot of the time, it is like a hidden illness. That was a weird sound that Janini <laughs> just made out of her cocoa straw. Hopefully it didn't come through on the mic. But anyways, but just to read the definition here, it's more mental health pretty much pertains to psychological and emotional well-being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some stats real quick, just to talk about its context to university yeah. students. So there was a pretty major study consisting of over 25,000 Ontario University students uh, by the American College Health Association. Mm-hmm. And it showed that between 2013 and 2016, there was a 50% increase in anxiety, 47% increase in depression, and 86% increase in substance abuse. Ooh. Suicide attempts also rose uh, during this period by 47%. Holy crap. What are your thoughts on that, Fiona? Wow. No, that that's a really surprising number. I didn't know it was that high, actually. Yeah, that's quite, like, 
significant like mm-hmm. 50 it's not like 10 but also more. like i'm not that surprised because i know like university is such a tough time for a lot of people because it's like transitioning into something completely new so mm-hmm. yeah i think this number is like it's surprising but not at the same time if that makes sense what i'm really curious about though is like what has changed between those two years yeah for that to increase significantly because I, I feel like yeah like what fiona said everyone's transitioning to a different mm-hmm. chapter of their life or whatever but why back in 2013 versus what was the year you said 2016 2016 what happened in that three years that made it so significant that mm-hmm. is a good point there likely could have been i'm trying to think back because this was a study mm-hmm. with ontario students mm-hmm. obviously we weren't university students at the time not even high school students not even high school <laughs> students <laughs> now they know our age <laughs> <laughs> at one point what was i even saying i lost my train of thought but yeah like yeah. what was going on socially that made it social media that could maybe, be a reason maybe right yeah and, yeah emerging social media like instagram started getting what <laughs> <laughs> instagram started getting bigger i think tiktok too tiktok was not a thing back sorry then. okay i'm a boomer um oh, yeah linkedin linkedin sure i mean like I, i'm not too big on linkedin but i know Sorry if I was cutting you off there, but no. I know whenever I hop on LinkedIn, I always feel invalidated. Yeah. Yeah. People yeah. just seem to be promoting everything. Yeah, yeah, like they got into med school and then you go look at their credentials or whatever, what they've done, and you're like, and well, yeah, they I have, have like, a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, that's it. No, but yeah, maybe social media, but I like don't know what other factors. Maybe, like, I don't think the curriculum has changed much within that three years for it to be significantly changing Mm -hmm. the mental health but it also could be the mere fact of mental health is more talked about now than Mm -hmm. it was back then Mm -hmm. so these stats could be simply like a self-reporting thing Mm -hmm. that is a good point one thing i'm also curious to see so in doing the research for this podcast i haven't seen a lot of information during the covid period really so uh, because you know it's so new so Mm -hmm. obviously you're not gonna have that much stats Mm -hmm. or like long-term stats coming out but i'd be interested to see what that would look like like if someone were to do a study that would be a good thesis topic for a university student change your thesis yeah i'll change my thesis yeah yeah yeah. but yeah just like looking at the mental health of students during covid covid yeah i mean we did a podcast before about mental health in general during COVID mm-hmm. times and we saw that there was definitely an increase in depression, anxiety, and substance use before that. Mm-hmm, definitely. But I guess pertaining to university students, we don't know how significant that yeah. contributed since especially since it's been online school and I don't mm-hmm. know about you guys, but yeah. online school like has made me stressed even more than I like typically mm-hmm. would have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even though there's like easier aspects I guess you could say, like you don't have to tra- like do transportation to school. Mm-hmm. There is still that, like, I think we can all agree that the load has significantly increased because yeah. of online school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, like, sorry. No, I was, sorry. I was going to say, like, everyone I talk to, like, on campus during Welcome Week, like, the second years that I talked to, they were all like, yeah, it was not a great time for mm-hmm. them just because every day felt the same and you're basically, like, trapped in this space where, like, every day is just the same and it feels so mundane and like mm. you you don't have anything to do or yeah. like friends to talk to so it makes sense that during covid times like mental health was decreasing or like, it was getting worse for a lot of people so yeah but so the second years they they didn't come to campus right they haven't gone um a mm-hmm. lot of them never been on campus yeah, before. this is like their first, first time. time yeah so, like i guess to also like attribute that at least with us, we've had memories of being on campus, mm-hmm. and we kind of know like what to look forward to, right? Mm-hmm. Like once COVID has ended and everything, and mm-hmm. I mean for the most part, everyone's back on campus to like, an extent. There's a level of security yeah. and comfort that we have being on campus because we're familiar with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but for like second years, for them like it being every single day the same day, mm-hmm. they don't really have anything to look forward to. They don't know what like campus life is like Mm -hmm. so maybe to them it's like what they've experienced it that's what is university to them yeah and maybe that has affected them differently versus how it has affected us Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for sure one thing i wanted to ask you guys both so how have you guys throughout your university career not just during covid Mm -hmm. but just in general how have you maintained your work-life balance and do you think that there have been significant changes in managing that from like high school versus now? And then I what you managed. <laughs> You've yeah, never I managed. Think, I haven't managed. any of us, yeah. I'm just on fire. <laughs> 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 I'm constantly burning. I'm just running. <laughs> okay, 
Yeah, no, but okay, you want to answer this first, Fiona? <laughs> sure. I think, like, looking back to first year and where I was in my life at that time, it was rough. Like, the transition from high school to university was... Like, it literally hit me like a bus because I wasn't expecting such a big change. Because mm-hmm. I was on res, so you had to, like, cook for yourself. You had to clean. Oh. You had to do your own laundry. And, like, I'm already, like, a pretty independent person. And, like, I was looking forward to, like, moving into res and, like, living alone and living with friends. But I don't know. Something about it, I, I was just like, oh, no. Like, there's no more security. Or there's mm. no more, like, no one's holding my hand anymore. I had to make yeah. a, my own decisions and stuff like that. So... I don't know, like, I gained a lot of weight in first year, too, because, like, I wasn't taking care of myself. Dude, I got husky. Yeah, Yeah, I I literally gained 15 Mm -hmm. pounds in first year because I was just, like, eating at, like, odd hours of the day. Literally, like, 4 a.m. scrambled eggs. And I would have, like, chicken fingers at, like, 2 (laughs) Mm a.m. And, like, coffee at, like, 2 a.m. And, like... I would have a really messed up sleep schedule mm-hmm. and like miss all my classes in the morning. So obviously that affected my academics, but also like my mental well-being. So yeah, like looking back, it was so rough and I'm so thankful that like I I like went through that mm-hmm. because like I experienced what it would be like to be at the very low in mm-hmm. my life. So I don't know. What was the question? <laughs> Work-life balance? Yeah, but like in you saying that though, to get to the question i guess not saying what you said was invalid but how did you find that balance then so you were at like a relatively lower point Mm -hmm. how did you move away from that end up managing i think a lot of it was like finding community or like finding friends Mm. kind of to support you through it because it was tough like like for my roommates like i didn't know any of them and they Mm -hmm. were strangers to me so like I literally just used my room to sleep and then i would like hang out with my friends outside and do like stuff outside um but i think how i manage finding community and also realizing that like there's there's no way that i can continue living like this because i was gonna gain more weight like i wasn't taking care of myself i was doing poorly and like i was like okay there was kind of like a turning point it was gradual it wasn't like one day i was like oh my gosh like i need Mm -hmm. to change it was kind of gradual like i was noticing things in my life where i wanted to improve and like i was like okay the only way is up and like Mm -hmm. as cliche as that sounds like i think you just have to realize for yourself like what you want for yourself um in terms of like your future and your mental health because i learned the importance of like taking care of your mental health and your physical health because nothing is more important than that Mm -hmm. so i kind of realized that for myself and then like in second year i like went to the gym more often like i took care of myself i wasn't eating like at very very odd hours of the day like I, I meal prepped and stuff like that and also like it helped that I lived in a house of people that cared about me and like mm-hmm. cared about my mental well-being as well so yeah it wasn't anything uh sudden it was kind of like a gradual like okay I need to take care of myself and then everything else just kind of fell into place like in terms of grades and stuff like that so I yeah think for me like you were saying how it's gradual for me I think for me it was like more like a like click like mm-hmm. it was just like so first semester was a complete shit show i don't mm-hmm. know if i can swear on this but i <laughs> said first things you're good yeah. it's our podcast you can really say whatever you, you are want. the boss <laughs> it was a complete shit show and like i remember like not getting well i was at mcgill so like a 4.0 like not a 12 here but 4.0 yeah. and i'm like what am i doing wrong like i'm literally giving it my all at one point yeah. but then i also realized the way that i was studying in high school versus how I was studying in university yeah. is not going to be good. Like, it's not good enough. Mm-hmm. And they're like, yes, it affected my mental health to a point where I'm like, am I even, like, am I... Like, I was like, am I going to make it into med school? Like, it was literally, like, <laughs> yeah. one of those moments I'm like, wait, am I... Do I have to, like, basically reevaluate every aspect of my life? Yeah. But, so after, like, semester one, like, I, like, barely made it through. Semester two, I was like, okay, like, this is, like, a fresh start for me. I'm like... I kind of knew I was capable of more than, like, what the grades were where I was getting, mm-hmm. right? And I'm like, I need to really look at, like, this is what I want. This is what I got to do. So I kid you not. Like, I was studying, like, probably 24-7. I had the shittiest sleep schedule. Mm. I ate, but I didn't gain weight. Like, I've never, I haven't did the freshman 15. I didn't gain weight, which is kind of crazy. Good for you. Yep. Yeah. Same. <laughs> but I literally, so I studied constantly, and I did get my grades up. Mm-hmm. But there was... Like, yeah, I was feeling fulfilled in that aspect of, like, yeah, I'm doing as well as I thought I would be. Mm -hmm. But there's also the other aspect. I was like, 
I cannot be studying 24-7. Mm-hmm. If I could just interject real quick. Yeah. You bring a good point with that, though. Like, a lot of people do find validation in their grades, but yeah. that can't be, like, your whole story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, it's kind of crazy that I was like, okay, like, great, yeah, 4.0, woo, like, mm-hmm. yeah. And then, like, at one point, I was like, this is not it for me. And mm-hmm. then, like, we all know how to transfer here. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and then I, I definitely, I think, like, coming to Mac, though, like, versus McGill, I can honestly say the load of work or, like, the ability to do well in a chorus was significantly less of effort I have to put mm-hmm. in. Like, I have to put half the effort as I did at McGill. Mm-hmm. And that's not to shit I'm not on to, McGill or anything yeah. like that. It's, well, not even saying McMaster's easy. I'm yeah. just saying, like, I guess the way that the curriculums are at the two schools are different, mm-hmm. right? Like, I feel like McMaster is much more, like, in a sense, uh, like, grade forgiving. Or, like, you guys have, like, you can drop a... You have quizzes every week. Mm-hmm. Or you have, like... Your, one of your tests can be dropped or something. Like, stuff like opportunities for you to do Improve, more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. While McGill was more like, you have a 30% midterm, 70% final. Like, something like that. So, it was like, you mess up once, that's it. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. you don't have, like, redemption for it. Yeah. If there's any high school student that ends up listening to this, um, one thing that I would really recommend looking into before starting a university, look into, like, the style of the way that the curriculum's taught. Mm -hmm. So some schools, like McGill, like you were saying, is Mm -hmm. very didactic. It's Mm -hmm. very, like, lecture-based, and you have the tests, and Mm -hmm. that's it. Versus schools like, like, McGill, or not McGill, (laughs) McMaster, um, Western, I believe, as well. Like, a few other schools, it's more, like, um, Student focus, if that makes like, sense. Like, like what is it? Case based. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah learning. Mm-hmm. Inquiry style. I think, yeah. like, like, I'm not saying McGill is shitty. Like, I'm not saying mm-hmm. like, it was like, a, it's a great school if you want to mm-hmm. learn, great props, everything. Mm-hmm. It's just you got to find your learning style and how mm-hmm. you can excel, right? Because definitely I did not excel in their mm-hmm. midterm and test. I need other ways to show my knowledge and, like, mm-hmm. apply it differently without burning out. Because I genuinely thought, like, the 24 hours. I would study yeah. a day mm-hmm. at McGill. It like was like I kind of burnt out during first year a bit, and I had to like Same. recharge over the sure. summer. And mm-hmm. I was like, okay. But then again, when I came to Mac, I was like, mm, this is kind of manageable. And I'm like, I could do some clubs, and I can work. And mm-hmm. it's just mainly like, okay, this is what I can and I cannot do. Mm-hmm. It's honestly like a trial and error thing. Like you it do really it, is. Yeah. you can't do it. You're like, okay, I'm gonna back away from it now, or yeah. like, okay, I can work this, so I, maybe I can do more of it. So it's honestly like there's no strategy like how they say you can yeah. do this and this it was just let's just guess and check at this point mm-hmm. yeah that's a good point i think that goes for all schools though like mm-hmm. le- finding your learning style because mm-hmm. like as you said the methods you use in high school probably will not work in mm-hmm. university yeah. like mm-hmm. it will barely get you through if you like stick with what you did in high mm-hmm. school because it's much more fast paced and there's like things thrown at you like in the second week of school so literally uh, a 20 percent test no actually. literally <laughs> and like there are opportunities like if you fail it's fine like everyone's gonna fail at some point many times. yeah fail. many times i'm sure we can all speak about like yeah. failing and stuff mm-hmm. but like what's good about like university is that especially in first year like you're allowed to fail and you're allowed to make mistakes mm-hmm. because that's the point like trial and error as you said finding your learning style like you can study 24 hours a day and still like fail your midterm yeah mm-hmm. it's oh, about yeah. like finding that balance as you mm-hmm. said well we're answering the question now yeah. but, like <laughs> finding that balance where you can be efficient but also have a lot of time to spend with your friends and like Mm -hmm. things that you actually like doing that can recharge you to study more effectively and like first year is really trial and error like you're you're trying to find what works for you um and like what your learning style is and it it honestly like the content doesn't get easier as you like progress it doesn't doesn't, but i think it's like we get used to it yeah yeah. and like the it it starts to become more manageable Mm -hmm. and like things start to become they seem easier, but it's just, like, we're used to it now. Because you kind of learned how to go yeah, about it. And you're sure. like, okay, I only yeah. know second week I'm going to get screwed over. So yeah. like, get my, let me get my shit together kind of thing. Yeah, for sure. I think the thing that really clicked for me, I'm a very quote person. I like saying quotes. And there's certain quotes that are very, like, important to mm-hmm. shaping my framework on mm-hmm. mental health. But there's one in particular. Life's what's ha- or Life is what happens when you're busy making plans. I've heard Sonia say this so <laughs> many times. But too. it's so true. Because yeah, I, like, back in first year, like, before I dropped out, and then I came back, and then I had to catch up on courses, and then some courses didn't catch. Like, mm-hmm. catching up on school is another thing. You're never behind. It's, like, you can take as long as you need to graduate. So catching up maybe isn't the right word there. Are they going to say you're never behind in school? I'm like, tell me why. 
why I'm putting um, lectures behind right now. <laughs> okay, in that sense, procrastinating can make yeah, you yeah. behind, but, like... It, there's no time limit to, you, like, finishing your goals. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to sure. get it yeah. yeah, but literally, um, life's what's ha- life is what happens when you're busy making plans. I was studying, like, 24 hours a day, like, nonstop, and then, like, then I got burnt out, and then I stopped studying, mm. and then I started doing other stuff 24 hours a day, which is why I gained the team. <laughs> And then that went on to the second year as well. But anyways, we don't do that as much anymore. We are healthy. We are, we're fit. <laughs> we huge now. We go yeah, to the gym. To the I gym. am going to the gym in 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But something about, like, <laughs> we'll get, it's getting a little late, but it's okay. But, like, being able to find that balance, like, you can, like, it sounds kind of cliche to say, but if you are like able to see beyond having like the best grades and everything like mm-hmm. that and be able to reach for things how what am i trying to say like if you're able to find validation beyond just grades and numbers mm-hmm. you can find so much more fulfillment in life and i feel for me being able to do that has allowed me to not only do better in school oh, but yeah. just like be a happier person overall mm. honestly i can relate to that 100 percent. yeah nice. yeah 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 next <laughs> yeah. okay another question here probably like the main one i want to hear your, both of your inputs mm-hmm. on so us being both uh or not both all of us being of asian descent <laughs> <laughs> um there are like i don't know if your parents have ever had this conversation with you but there are like cultural aspects about school and like mm-hmm. the effort that you put into it um, what am I trying to say here? So what are your thoughts on like the work effort or the effort that you have to put into work in a nine to five job mm. versus uh, like being in school? So like, I think what Sonia's trying to come, trying to say, like I've had conversations where being stressed about school is not the equivalent to the stress you would have about work. Yeah, that's, mm. thank you. Like, it's like, it's just school. You yeah. shouldn't be stressed, mm-hmm. right? Like it's not something you should stress over. About. Yeah. Like, like it's not yeah yeah but a work that's it's valid for you to be stressed Mm -hmm. and i feel like that has like the cultural aspect to like i feel like yeah i think i think it's mainly a cultural thing just because maybe having immigrant parents Mm -hmm. for them school was just easier for them to do and but working for them that was something they had to provide for their family yeah Mm -hmm. means a way of like escaping the war and stuff Mm -hmm. right like it's all that stress attributed to like working while I think for us, I definitely think we're privileged, mm, right? For sure. Yeah. But like, there's, not to cut you off, but yeah. there's like trauma, I guess, to an extent associated what they went through trying mm. to do work mm-hmm. and versus like working us. at McDonald's right now, like for yeah. us to work, yeah. Or like us being in school yeah. and like the work that we do with like a thesis yeah. or like trying to get into med school. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I was just wondering, like, do you have any experience with that? I think for, like, I can speak for all of us because, like, we're all immigrants. Um, we are immigrants. <laughs> we're all immig- We're children of immigrants. <laughs> we're children of immigrants. <laughs> but I think, like, yeah, what you said about our parents, like, have, having to worry about, like, putting food on the table mm-hmm. for us and, like, having that security of, like, what we're going to eat tomorrow or, like, mm-hmm. if we have enough to, like, support the kids and stuff. So mm-hmm. I think it's different for them. But I feel like... Okay, in my case with my parents, like, they know, like, school now for us, like, university now is so much different Mm -hmm. from, like, what, like, 20 years ago or stuff like that. So, the stress level is definitely, for me at least, like, they understand that university is very, very stressful now Mm -hmm. because there's so much competition, especially in, like, science and, like, in STEM where everyone's trying to be cutthroat and everyone's trying to earn a place Mm -hmm. you know like being a doctor like being a dentist or whatever Mm -hmm. um and they understand that and they know like i'm always stressed about it because like i don't know like what next month is gonna look Mm -hmm. like for me or like what eight months from now is gonna Mm -hmm. look like for me um but i'm also very privileged like you said like my parents they've always emphasized like school first and like you can work later because you're going to have mm. your whole life to work so you don't have to worry about the money now yeah um because you're going to have to like work like after school yeah and like my dad has always told me like yeah you're going to suffer now like through university and you're going to feel very very stressed mm-hmm. but then like think about 10 years from now like you're going to be like secured and mm. you, you're going to have like a job that you can provide for your family so mm. 
I don't know, to me, like, this stress right now that we're going through is kind of worth it. If you mm. look at the bigger picture, like, what you were talking about, about, like, looking towards, like, your purpose. Mm-hmm. And I think that brings a lot of comfort knowing that, oh, like, this is what I want to do and I'm working towards the goal. And like you said, it's not, like, what what's the thing they say? It's not a marathon. Oh, Wait, it's, what? It's, it's not a race. It's a marathon. Yeah, it's not a race. It's a marathon. And that kind of okay. means, like, everyone, like, is at their own pace. Oh, it's not a sprint. I mean, yeah. There we go. <laughs> Honestly, we're butchering everything. Because they're both races. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, but everyone, like, does things at their own pace. And mm-hmm. I think, yeah, I, I think I'm very privileged because my parents understand that I'm very stressed. And, like, they know it's a different time and a different yeah. generation. Um, but I, like, see their work and, like, what they do. And, like, it stresses me out because mm-hmm. they're still, like, trying to provide for, like, yeah us and like my siblings Mm -hmm. um and i think i think my biggest fear in life is not being financially stable Mm -hmm. and providing for my parents Mm -hmm. because look like especially for like i don't know because like we're we're children of immigrants we're always thinking like okay how can we take care of our parents because Mm -hmm. they've done so much for us like they literally sacrifice everything for me and my siblings Mm -hmm. so yeah that's my biggest fear like not being able to provide for them or not being Mm -hmm. able to like even provide for my family if it yeah you know like stuff like that that scares me a lot i think for me like with the whole parents thing like definitely first year was a struggle of being like why are you stressed about anything yeah Mm -hmm. like my work is stressful but why work but like i've definitely gone to a place where my parents were like oh shit yeah like this is stressful for you Mm -hmm. you have a lot going on like i remember first year like my parents would call every day and i'm like i don't have time i don't have time they'd be like what do you mean you don't have time Mm -hmm. like you only have classes for two hours yeah but like the amount of work that follows after that or something right Mm -hmm. there was like a point where it's like being stressed was not valid or something Mm -hmm. and i'm like but no like whatever Mm -hmm. But definitely, I think, like, having conversations, being like, okay, I have to do this and this for med school. Or, like, even telling them, like, you know I only have a 10% chance of getting to med school. And that's mm-hmm. even with, like, the best of grades, right? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. that's why I'm always doing something. There's always more work. Like, school is not just going to lectures and doing tests. I think mm-hmm. for us, it's also extracurriculars and yeah. Yeah. being part of stuff. True. And also, like, just, like, a social aspect, too, of networking with other individuals. Like, even, like, yeah, we're friends. Mm -hmm. But there's also, like, when you're meeting new people, there's the network aspect. And trying to find new opportunities, like, getting a job. Or, (laughs) sorry. Like, getting a job or finding a research position. There's, like, all of that stress that Mm -hmm. school, again, it's not just lectures and homework like it used to be back in Mm -hmm. high school. So I think there's, like, that level of stress that's definitely, like, oof. Yeah, I feel that. But you get, like... Truly, I feel that very much. <laughs> yeah. Like, with my family, for example, so, and not that I actively compare my sister mm. and I, but, like, it's weird. So, with me, whenever I talk about, like, my work, mm-hmm. I don't work that much, but, like, I do TA now. Mm-hmm. But I also volunteer, like, God knows how many hours a week. Like, 40 hours. Like, mm, like more than that like really like generally i was trying job she said (laughs) yeah like it's literally like having two jobs and not to you know minimize you know people that actually have to like slave Mm -hmm. over two jobs but generally like there is all like right now i'm like i'm probably not going to bed until 3 a.m because i realize like i have to do all this even though i was doing all that other work during the day and then i only Mm -hmm. sleep for five hours and then tomorrow i'm only gonna sleep for five hours and blah 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 blah. yeah like Mm -hmm. it's an ongoing stress but with just volunteering but then Mm -hmm. my sister talks about like her work and how she's working at you know a law firm and then before she used to work at like a restaurant like Mm -hmm. you used to do all this like tangible skills that you like get paid for yeah and whenever I taught like whenever there's that sort of discussion it's like oh why isn't Sonia working or blah 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 it's like auntie whoever like yeah (laughs) ma'am I can't like I mean I can if I wanted to like burn out (laughs) literally there's a hundred and something hours in a week I probably like I don't know it's just it's a different type of strain and effort that Mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of people understand unless you're pursuing academia yeah yeah and to like like if you were to I guess with us too we're privileged in a sense we're like yeah we're doing med school everyone's like oh yeah that's stressful you guys must be Mm -hmm. busy right to an aspect Mm -hmm. but like let's say you say yeah I'm an English major it's like okay so why don't you have a job Mm -hmm. but again like the majors don't differ university is still stressful everyone has yeah like, mm-hmm. workload that and again like it's also a different thing like everyone deals with stress differently so mm-hmm. the magnitude of how you deal with it like you could be someone who works a nine-to-five versus someone who's like us 
doing all this stuff, but mm-hmm. we could all be experiencing stress to the same level. And I don't mm-hmm. think there's a certain limit or a certain expectation that everyone has when it comes to stress, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like, we're all experiencing at different levels, and there's no way for us to, like, basically quantify that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And true, it's kind of hard to say what's more stressful when you can't really say that unless you really attribute it to the specific person and their actual activities, specifically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think stress is weird because to some extent to some extent like stress is good because it Mm -hmm. will push you to Mm -hmm. work harder be better Mm -hmm. like the fire under your ass exactly Mm -hmm. but then too Mm -hmm. much sometimes is like you just get burnt out so fast Mm -hmm. and it becomes really toxic Mm -hmm. so i think finding ways to cope with stress is very important and i think Mm -hmm. i learned that throughout first year or like towards the end of it Mm -hmm. when i was like so burnt out to the point i was Mm -hmm. like i cannot get out of bed yeah Mm -hmm. and i'm like what do i do kind of thing so i think taking care of yourself and like learning how to manage your own stress because it looks different for everyone like Mm -hmm. you said is super important in university especially and it will carry on to Mm -hmm. like when you guys like work and stuff like that so i was gonna oh Oh, no, go for it. Oh, I was just going to say, like, the whole, like, how you couldn't get out of bed. Like, there was times where, like, I would be, have so much work, right? Mm-hmm. But I would just sleep for hours. That's mm-hmm. right. Yep. And I'm like, okay, I'm sleeping for 13 hours a day or something. Mm-hmm. But I'm still tired when I wake up. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And it was, like, at a point where I'm like, I think I'm burnt out. Like, this yeah. is, like, yeah. I'm physically and mentally, t- like, I'm so mentally tired at this point. I'm, like, exhausted that my body is reacting mm-hmm. to that. Yeah. And all I'm doing is sleeping. And then it's a whole cycle of, like, me sleeping for so long don't have enough time to do work yeah. but I'm sleeping again because I'm trying to procrastinate or like it's just like all this it's like a cycle that like couldn't stop where at one point I was like okay mm-hmm. we gotta really like <laughs> figure yeah. this out right yeah. like even now like I'm not trying to say like I know how to deal with my mental health like it is no, every day yeah. it is like I'm learning new things about mm-hmm. myself I'm like okay mm-hmm. I can I cannot do this like when we had the MCAT and we had that like two weeks of summer and while you know everyone else is doing their med school laps i'm like let me take this two weeks yeah. to not do my med school yeah. laps and i literally did the day of sorry dalhousie <laughs> <laughs> like, like, be careful with slapping the oh, table sorry. just so the mic doesn't yeah. um like basically i literally did the day of and i was still able to do that because i was like honestly like it will stress me out if i worked on it all week because mm-hmm. i can't do that mm-hmm. like i am burnt out to the point where my brain even if i were to work on it during that week it would not be the best right so mm-hmm. i needed to like physically and emotionally detach myself from school related things and just enjoy just social aspects of like seeing friends or like hanging out playing with my dogs playing with my dogs (laughs) cuddling or whatever with my dogs (laughs) just with my dogs but like stuff like that so i think i like personally i've learned that like i'm like definitely it's different for everyone Mm -hmm. but like if i take big chunks off Mm -hmm. and i spend one day of just grinding it out whatever i'm doing I'm okay mentally. Like, mm-hmm. I am happy and content. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But for other people, they might need to spread it out. Yeah. So I just think, like, coping mechanisms are different, too, when it comes to, like, how we go about mental health. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But, so, just to clarify, so your main, th- like, you, your stress sort of manifests in a way that, like, you dissociate yeah. from, like, Fiona, would you also say that's the same thing? Uh, when, when, what does it look like to you? To some extent, yeah, but, like, when I... Like, I experienced, like, the sleeping for 13 mm-hmm. hours thing, like, in mm-hmm. the summer. Like, the summer when I was studying as for well. Them. Like, yeah. yeah, I would sleep so much, and then I would feel, like, hypocritical. Or mm-hmm. I would be like, oh, my gosh, like, there's no more time to study. Mm-hmm. When I look at other people who are working full-time, who are mm-hmm. studying for the MCAT, volunteering in the how summer. How do you do that? Yeah. And I look at them, I'm like, how? Yeah. And then I feel bad about myself, but the cycle continues because yeah. I'm just like, uh, like, I don't know what to do mm-hmm. because... I'm so lazy, like, compared to other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then that just triggers more, like, stress s- and doubt about myself. Yeah. And, like, I'm, like, not cut out for this. Mm-hmm. Or, like, other people are doing ten times more than me. Mm-hmm. But I'm, like, not even, like, studying enough or, mm-hmm. or stuff like that. Yeah. And I didn't realize what it was until, like, you mentioned mm-hmm. it. Like, it was probably because I was burnt out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, like, I can't compare myself to other people because there's it's just different yeah. right like because your abilities are not the same uh, to what they're doing. yeah they exactly. might need 10 hours but you can do it in five hours or something yeah. like that like yeah, stuff like so, that too right? yeah. yeah i think in university maybe this could be a contributing factor to why suicide rates and anxiety yeah. and all that kind of stuff is mm-hmm. increasing literally every year mm-hmm. it's so easy to feel um lesser than to yeah. everyone else, you're literally constantly surrounded by people with mm-hmm. GPAs that will always exceed yours. Mm-hmm. 
like it's so easy to feel inferior in this environment but not to sound Mm. cheesy again but it's so important to realize as soon as you can that you are worth it no yeah because like if Mm. you can't it like your life will become a living hell in Mm. university i Mm. think someone once told me this i think it was like my music teacher back in high school but he made this good point of that you're always going to be smarter than someone, but you're also going to be dumber than someone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There is never, you're never going to be the best. You're never going to be the worst. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's always someone above and below you. And I was like, damn, like it doesn't make you average. Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. just means there's always room for you to improve. Mm-hmm. But there's also like successes you have made and like achieved. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really true. And I think people need to like look at their successes more because oftentimes mm-hmm. we compare ourselves to like other people mm-hmm. in our lives who are like, doing so much more than us like people our age who mm-hmm. got into med school or like yeah. got into a new program or working or yeah. like having families like getting married, getting so married yeah at our age and we're like wow like they're doing so much and we're still here and like i have four dogs yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, you she know, has dogs you know what we should do right now just like is a little fun way to words of affirmation <laughs> i'm not even joking like let's gas each other up okay, right okay. now the, the people now. listening are gonna be so they're gonna be like i'm cringing <laughs> but you know what like this could also be like a little mm. extra exercise if you want to do it with your buds or with yourself or something like that like yeah. it I makes a way to end the podcast mm-hmm. too yeah okay I got let's this. start off with our our guest no. our guest of honor should we we gas her up yeah oh Fiona? you're killing it what your thesis <laughs> You're grinding it out with CCF, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. with Cyclones. You did an amazing job at Welcome Week. Yeah. You were on the run mm-hmm. for a whole week, got sunburn and everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you're still here with a smile on your face. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Generally, your smile, you have a great smile. You're always crushing it. Even if like things look like they're going shitty, you're always smiling through it. So that's a really positive thing mm-hmm. to be around. You know what? You're a positive person to be around. You have so a lot of positive so energy. Funny. <laughs> because i feel like i'm so negative all the time literally no i think being around you you have a very positive energy mm-hmm. okay i get that a lot actually i think it's like a coping mechanism mm-hmm. though because i'm like oh my gosh like so many things are going on in my life let me help my friends feel more comfortable mm-hmm. like especially in social settings like mm-hmm. i just like cracking jokes to mm-hmm. make other fe- people feel like happy yeah because i think yeah there's so much stuff going on that like behind closed doors i'm like oh my god i'm so stressed yeah stuff mm-hmm. like that i respect that though yeah period I appreciate that Janu- no. <laughs> <laughs> okay Januni, you are Probably one of the quickest people, like, I just don't, Wait, like, <laughs> like, speed. I am the flash. <laughs> but, like, no, generally, like, the way that I've said this before, but I'll say it again, but, like, the, like how quick you are in, like, processing things and yeah, retaining yeah. information and being observant of your surroundings, I think that's one of the, like, you're covering your mouth. I'm but, trying not to laugh right now. No, but I'm being honest <laughs> okay. here. You're, like, quickest is probably a weird adjective to mm. use, but, like, <laughs> you're speedy. Like, I'm the flash very <laughs> I thought she was gonna say you're quick in the morning. <laughs> God, thank but, you. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Clothes are great. Outfits mm-hmm. are fire yeah. all the time. Mm-hmm. I also agree. I feel like you downplay like your intelligence. Yeah, a lot, and it's like humble, but also like cool. Like, <laughs> like I aspire. Cool, bro. <laughs> yeah. Good job. Two thumbs up. But yeah, I think. Yeah, you're smart, and, like, you don't like to, to show off a lot, which is good. I'm putting a thumbs up right now. I forgot we didn't have video. But, but Jen, like, just, two thumbs up. They're nice. Of okay, Sonia, sorry. No, I can't okay. take a compliment. I think Sonia does a lot of crap. Like, she is busy yes. with this. Like, she is awake 24-7. She's a bad She doesn't sleep. But the fact that she can still get up every morning and do what she has to do without, like, Complaining? Oh, no, I bitch mean. about it constantly. Nah, nah, nah. But like, you still do it. I don't hear about it. I don't. <laughs> I, I, I don't hear about it. I don't hear anything. But like, the fact that you still do it and you still have the energy to like, like you get shit done, man. Yeah. Like you really do. Like you're on my ass about things, and I'm like, oh wait, I forgot about that. Like you're like, you remember things, and I don't. So I think that's all honestly awesome. And you have your yeah. thesis, and you have you honestly have so much things going on that I'm just like, how. Oh. Yeah, Help. you're very hard working. I feel like you have so much stuff going on and I can't even imagine having to do so much. Like, yeah. 
I feel like we all have a lot, but you have a, a lot. lot. <laughs> Like, you're volunteering, mm-hmm. you're, like, part-time TA, whatever, whatever. Bruh. I could Cannot. not. Yeah. I feel like I would be so, like, stressed. But I think you're very resilient. Mm, and, yeah, and that's what it is. She's you resilient. big boy words. <laughs> yeah, resilient. yeah. So, How do you spell that? <laughs> R-E-S-I-L-I-E-N-T. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's right. I don't, I'll I don't take know your word for it. I'm not a that is So right. I will submit this to every med school. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I'm not applying this year. This is your but reference letter. <laughs> this is my reference letter for next year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But I think that was great. Mm-hmm. Thank you for bringing that up. That activity, Sonia. Yeah. That was a great activity. We'll do that as like a little house thing every now that's and then. So if cute. we're yeah. feeling bummed out, mm-hmm. we'll grab, yell at Tiffany, hey, do you want to positive yep. affirmations at one point i enjoy that but i think that's a great 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 way an amazing way to end off this podcast thank you guys for listening to our rambles um until next time because that was a long podcast but yeah. if you're here till the end thank you you, oh. you get bubble tea <laughs> no you don't no, we, you we don't. make no promises <laughs> this is a disclaimer okay <laughs> bye, bye. bye.